Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. I must be feeling in the festive mood after Friday's little bit of weirdness, because today, in a move that is probably no less weird, I want to talk about Games Workshop's Christmas Guide. Yeah, I know, stick with me here, there's actually some interesting things to say about this guide. Or interesting-ish, maybe? So I was in my almost local Warhammer store last week with my wife, fending off the usual questions from the staff about what I'm working on at the moment and what I want to buy next. Fun tip, tell them you're looking for Cursed City expansions. Anyway, they had a stack of these festive guides by the door, and one of those was the only thing I ended up walking out with. I'm proud of me. The guides are free. Games Workshop's generosity knows no bounds. And here it is with the good old Red Gobbo bounding into action on his Squig Bouncer. And yes, for the most part, this is just advertising stuff, but there are a few things worth noting, and that's why we're all here. First of all, rather surprisingly, it has a little advert for Dungeon Bowl in there, the Blood Bowl spin-off that Games Workshop announced recently, and which goes up for pre-order on Saturday the 27th of November. I say surprisingly because the advert includes the price, which as of making this video hasn't been officially announced. It's £95 or €125. Euros. It hasn't got the price in dollars, but I believe stuff that retails at £95 in the UK is normally around $150 in the US. Weirdly, the little advert refers to Dungeon Bowl as an expansion, which isn't really the case. While you can port miniatures from Blood Bowl to Dungeon Bowl, and there are some rules overlap, it's still a game in its own right. In fact, Games Workshop advertises it as a good way to learn the Blood Bowl rules, so after playing Dungeon Bowl you can dive into Blood Bowl proper. I guess someone's head is going to roll for that. Personally, I'm quite pleased to see one of the old classic games coming back. I even had a little moment where I thought I might buy it, but I have a copy of Blitz Bowl on my shelf, and that's a superb game. So superb, I really don't think I need any more fantasy football games in my collection. The game I'm more interested in is Battle in Balin's Tomb, which also goes up for pre-order on the 27th of November, but isn't listed in this guide. I'll be talking about it another day. Moving on, you get pages and pages of different products. Look, here are the Games Workshop Christmas plushies. Good luck finding one of those. Also, I note this page is called Stocking Fillers. I guess if any company was going to list a £60 advent calendar as a stocking filler, it would be Games Workshop. Over the page we have this little festive quiz, which tells you what you should buy. It told me I should buy Dungeon Bowl. Stop doing that, Games Workshop. The only thing here that I would want is the Lord of the Rings box, and I'm not ready to take on that project right now. But then we get to the useful stuff, the stuff that I think makes it worth grabbing one of these the next time you're walking by a Warhammer store. There's a painting guide for the Red Gobbo, which obviously would be useful for any grots or squigs you need to paint, and what I like about this is they've clearly kept it nice and simple for people who might be relatively new to painting. It's like something I'd do. Of course, this is also a sneaky underhanded way to sell paints in store, because the painting guide uses exactly 10 paints, and they list those 10 paints right next to an advert for their pick and mix paint sets, where you get one paint free when you buy 10 in store. Such deviousness. The Red Gobbo approves, I'm sure. Over the next four pages, there are two little games you can play with your Red Gobbo and any other miniatures you have. And of course, you don't even really need a Red Gobbo. The first game involves all the players chasing the Red Gobbo around the board trying to steal presents off him. It's really simple to play. You roll for a random event, move your character trying to get into base contact with the Gobbo, and then the Gobbo runs away. Repeat for each player until 20 minutes passes, in which case the Gobbo wins, or you have snatched 10 presents, in which case the person with the most presents wins. The second game is a squig race. Every player takes turns rolling for random events and then moving their squig around a racetrack. I like the movement in this game. You roll two dice and subtract the lowest number from the highest number to determine the distance in inches, but if you roll a double, your squig gets a burst of speed and you add the dice together. I know I know this movement system from something and I know someone in the comments is going to call me an idiot because I can't for the life of me recall where it's from right now. But, as you can see, neither of these games are traditional 40k or Age of Sigmar scenarios. They're fun little throwaway games. I kinda like them. They're the sort of things you could play with really young children around the Christmas holidays to help them get involved in your hobby if they aren't quite ready for a skirmish or a go on the paints. Clearly, the Red Gobbo is the star of this little gift guide, and he also features in an activity to get a free Christmas decoration. It's one of those activities that encourages you to buy a particular thing and then return to your Warhammer store regularly, thereby trying to boost that shop floor engagement Games Workshop is so fond of. 
if you buy, build, paint and play with a red gobbo, you get stamps at your local store. And then when you read the festive quiz that not so subtly nudges you to buy more products, you can claim a clear bauble that you can put your painted red gobbo in to display him on your tree. And that's it. It is, of course, just trying to find new ways to make you think you need all the things all the time, but the painting guide and the little games add a bit of value, which can't be bad for something you don't have to pay for. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, I'll be surprised, but please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.